Hey. It is me, the 10th. I'm Jennifer from Cultaholic. This is Us Day in Wrestling, and my guest today is the lovely Adam Pacitti. What's up? What's up? <laughs> How very 90s of you. Thank you. Let's go, let's go further back in time to 1981 though. Mm. Um, 37 years ago today, Vern Gagne. Mm -hmm. I hope I pronounced that right. Gagne West as he was known. <laughs> <laughs> what did he do? You <laughs> alright? We, we... <laughs> he broke me. Uh, <laughs> He retired from, from wrestling. Nothing to laugh about that. <laughs> he retired from wrestling after facing Nick Bockwinkle, I believe. Is that correct? That's correct. Yeah. So Jay Z's here. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, he retired because he, he won the aid. WA World Heavyweight and retired. AWA, I think. That's what I said. Okay. AWA. <laughs> <laughs> and he retired after that. Um, now, Vern Gagne was actually the owner of the AWA. Yes. He was. And um, unfortunately, the, the company would fold um, 10 years later. 91, right? 91, yeah. yeah. So, uh, yeah, he, he retired. He had a very long reign. Is that right? No, you're right. Sorry. He, he did. Um, he had 10 reigns, actually. Can you believe it? Well, own your spanning. own company. Um, spanning a total of... 4,677 days. Different times. Different times. That's an average of 410 or something days per round. I was going to say, how did you do that so quickly? But it's 10. It's a, it's a mean average there. Yeah, but that's amazing. That's, that is amazing, That isn't is amazing. It? Um, so yeah, and he retired. Um, at the age of his retirement, he was 55. Oh, 55. Good age. Yeah, it's a good, good time age. to retire. So yeah, um, happy retirement. Um, <laughs> 1999. Mm -hmm. This was it was Raw, and it was the highest rated single episode of Raw ever. That's interesting. That's what interesting. year was this? 98. 99. 99. Yep. Okay. So I don't know anything about like kind of TV talk, like ratings and stuff, but I believe it's the Nielsen rating. The Nielsen ratings. Right. That's right. Don't know anything about it, but it reached 8.1. That's 8.1% of the viewing audience was watching Monday Night Raw that night. Is that what yeah, that means? I believe so. That's huge! I think for that's like, how it works. Uh, that's pretty good. I think it is network share, yeah. I'm, I'm pretty sure it is. Let Wait. me know in the comments if I'm wrong, but I, that's what I've been told before. I don't know. Do you know what? I, I know an interesting fact about this. So if you want to run down the card. Okay, sure, right, okay, I've got a, a note of the card here. So, um, Billy Gunn and Kane, no contest match. Uh, the Big Show and Paul Bearer fought to a no contest. Um, That's a draw. Yeah, the Debra and Sable. Uh, that was an evening game. I match. mean, that's a draw, is in that brought in money. Paul Bearer versus Big Show. I wasn't explaining what a no contest okay. was. But no, that's a draw. <laughs> I Carry like, on. Okay. Uh, yeah, uh, there was an evening game match. Um, obviously. Obviously. Yep. Uh, but Big Boss Man defeated Tess in a nightstick on a pool match. Mm -hmm. uh, Cactus Jack defeated Viscera and Midian. Um, and ha ha hardcore handicap match. Uh, Brad Sean Farouk fought to a no contest. Lots of no contests in this. Uh, Pat Patterson and Ger Gerald Briscoe defeated the Mean Street Posse. Yeah, that was rated that was, uh, four point oh, seven five stars. That, that was actually a loser leaves. Not true. Match. Was it? Yeah, that was the the end of the Mean Street Posse. Never mind. Ah. Oh. Where are they now? There's actually a thing on WWE.com. Is there? Where are they? The same thing where. Where's Joey Abs? Um, he, I believe, is working. Right, so I'm not sure. Is he the one that works in the family car business? Somebody works in an office supplies place. Okay. Somebody works for their family's car oh. business, and the other one is a landscape gardener. <laughs> That's me. You know that is. I don't know how I managed to remember that. Yeah, no. But there you go. Well done, lads. Uh, Jeff Jarrett defeated Val Venus. Mm -hmm. Ken Shamrock and China. Yeah. Fought to a no, a no contest. Another no contest. Know, that's, that's four. four. Um, and then this main event. <clears throat> Steve Austin, The Rock and Vince McMahon defeated the corporate ministry, which was obviously Triple H, Stephanie and Undertaker. Which was the highest rated segment on the highest rated Raw ever. I know this. Do you? Yeah. Have a guess. The highest rated. Well, I'm getting phone for that match. Yeah. You'd think so, wouldn't you? You're wrong. Shut Baruka up. Bradshaw. 
What? I believe it was at the top of the second hour, and just because everybody was changing channels at that time, <laughs> that peaked, and that's the highest rated match, and not the highest rated segment in Raw history, <laughs> but the highest rated segment on the highest rated episode. But there Monday was there was a wee bit of mm, because um, mm. TNT, which um, aired Nitro, they decided to air the NBA playoffs that night. So technically, the only wrestling at that time was Raw. Still. It's the highest rated Raw ever. I know, Don't it was a bit negative for is. me, wasn't that? Yeah, yeah, no, well, yeah. yeah. Oh, no, that's, oh, who's this guy? That's interesting Ooh. though, no, it's, um, so I, I assume yeah. that they wouldn't have beaten well, you you WCW. Mean. Not necessarily beaten WCW, but they wouldn't have uh, topped the record if WCW had Yeah, they probably the wouldn't have, yeah. There you go though. So, lots of no contests, and now we know what the Main Street Posse are up to. Uh, 2001. Sad day for Vince McMahon. Sad day for the XFL, as it's announced that they will be shutting down after just one season. But only for 17 or 18 years. Until. <laughs> it's weird, I don't know anything about American football, so I'm not really best place to comment Me on neither. this. Me neither. So I. Don't have a clue. I know a lot of people criticised it because it was so driven and linked to wrestling like one of the first people you saw was Vince and then The Rock and all of these big names who were so synonymous <laughs> with wrestling which was not necessarily a different audience but certainly looked down upon by a segment of the of the viewing audience uh, immediately saw that and were turned off by it but it did do you think just wondering that this is because people that are into sports like real sports Sometimes like down on sports entertainment. Yeah, That's I, not I, a I real sport. It, I think in part it is. Jack's got his hands up. I'm into real sports. You are into real sports. Yeah. Yeah, I'm not saying but that no, everyone. I'm just asking, like not everybody, okay. but some people. No. Mm -hmm. No, I think, I, that's, I think that, that's possibly it. Um, but they did. Uh, Pioneer lots of things that are apparently still used today as far as production techniques goes. It was a very unique looking program yep. I think the referees had uh, cameras on their heads or something and the players had cameras on them and okay, that, so that's, that's stuff that was, that's yeah, happening now. That does happen in certain places now. Uh -huh. yeah. yeah, really interesting I'll be interested to see if it works this time. You know what? I think it will I think Vince has got so like for him to bring a failed project such a monumental failure back means that there's something He's got something up his sleeve. Yeah. What, Vince? Tell us now. Tell us. I think it's going to succeed. I don't understand the rules, so I don't know if I'll be watching. I, I'm surprised that it didn't get a rebrand. Just because yeah. it's, it's linked to failure, isn't it? It's like me starting a shop and calling it Woolworths. Nobody's going to go there. I would. I miss Willies. Well, losers might go there, but most people probably. I'm a loser. Any birthdays? Oh, yeah. <laughs> it's a big birthday. Sorry. It's actually. Yeah, but... We've actually, actually, I didn't mean no. to call you a loser, I, I feel bad. Now. And actually, before I, I went worked to in Woolworths for three years. Whatever. Used Just to pick steal, and pick and mix. <gasps> no. Yeah, big time. You, this is why they went bust, because of you. I didn't steal £850 million <laughs> pounds worth of pick and mix. <laughs> well, I don't know about that. <laughs> before we go into birthdays, though, because okay. there is a birthday, it's a really, really, really brilliant birthday today, guys. But yeah, no, I want to go to 2015, because I think it's important to mention. And I did a lot of research on it. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah, no, TNA. Yes. Um, there was an Impact Wrestling taping uh, where Rockstar Spud would win the gauntlet for the gold to win the TNA X Division Championship. Drake Maverick. Yeah, as we, Love as we know now, so do I. He's a good friend. He's a lovely, lovely, lovely guy. First person I ever interviewed. And he was so really? warm, so kind, um, just Such brilliant. a nice guy, isn't yeah, he? Yeah, he's really brilliant. And... A fundamental part of the British independent scene when the British wrestling scene wasn't what it is today. Like, yep. it's very easy to look at like Progress and ICW, yep, yep, yep. Rev Pro, and all of these great uh, companies, Defiant, everyone. <laughs> Defiant. Jack did it off camera, so I did it. Uh, and see where British wrestling is now. But 10 years ago, when Rockstar Spud was wrestling, guys like Spud, Doug Williams, Johnny Storm, all of these guys mm -hmm. uh, were wrestling in front of much smaller crowds but yep. keeping British wrestling alive and totally. we've got Drake Maverick, Rockstar Drake Maverick Spud, and I'm thank. so glad that he's where he's at now, he deserves it. Yeah totally. he really does, he's doing a great job. I would job. like to see him wrestle though, like, he, I mean, he will, of course he will, but he's just so good on the mic so yeah, no but I wanted to like 
You no, know, no, it's definitely worth mentioning. And then it was interesting because then it made me think, like he got introduced to TNA through the British boot camp. Of course, yeah. yeah. So that kind of made me think, like, with I the, um, that. the Blossom I, twins. Well, that was season was that? one. So season and Marty Squirrel was on Party that. Marty. Yes. Right. Like, it's nuts when you think about that. Yeah. You're like, my goodness, look at Marty's girl now. Yep. And that's that's where I first heard of him was on British Boot Camp. Right. Yeah, and the Blossom Twins. I don't know if they're wrestling still. No, they're not. They're not. No. They've, they've given that up. They do it? YouTube now. Go and oh, check them out. Yeah, yeah. Oh, cool. I, I, one of the, the referees for Defiant was one of, I can't remember which Chris one. Sharp. Chris Sharp, but I can't remember who he was married to, but he's oh. married to them. Uh, he's a former NXT ref, in fact. Sweet. Yeah, oh. uh, and they're, they're apparently doing very well. Oh, well, that's good. I'm really mm. glad because I like them. And then the British Boot Camp went on to second season. Yes. Actually. Is that the Grado season? It was. There was only the two. Big beef so. between Grado and Al Snow. Yes. Who else was there? Uh, Shaw Samuels, what? I remember. Do you want being to see the that, list of ones? Right, this is literally on. just the ones that are like big players now. I'll, um, you read them out and I'll tell you I'll if they like me or not. Oh, okay. <laughs> this is a fun game. Okay. Right, so Mark Andrews. Doesn't like me. Why? He I don't know, I've never everyone. met him, I've never met him. Oh right, okay, I really like him. Um, I've only met him once. Uh, Grado? Doesn't like me. Why? No, he does. Um, Maybe, I don't know. I love Grado. I'm going to stop playing this game. Give it. No, I'm like, sorry, because I just want to go, why? <laughs> oh, why? I don't know if any of them like no, me. No, well, mm, ask. Um, the late Chris Travis. Hi, hi Graham, do you what? like me? Chris Travis. Travis. Oh, yeah, late Chris Travis. Yeah. Amazing. Eligero was there. I think he likes me, yeah. I think he likes everyone. Uh, Dave Mastiff was there. I've been in a match with Dave. Have you? Yeah. Sort How of. How did that end? No, I don't think we, we stepped in the ring. Technically, you know, I've been in a match with Rey Mysterio. <laughs> because I've been in a rumble in which he competed. So that definitely there counts. Yeah, I'll... Take that, run with it. Yeah, no, that's... that's... Me and Rey. <laughs> in fact, Rockstar Spud was in that match. And got the pop of the night. Good. First time ever in Defiant, and only time, and he got a massive pop. No wonder. He's the bollocks, he's, he's brilliant. He's the best, I yeah, love yeah, him. Uh, Noam Dar was there. Fantastic. Uh, yeah, Rampage Brown there. Fantastic. Uh, RJ Singh was there. I love RJ Singh. So do I. I love RJ Singh. Uh, Shaz Samuels was there. Mm -hmm. Kaylee Ray was there. Uh, the Owens twins were there. The Owens twins? Yeah, they're, so they're my, my lot. Well, they're actually Irish, but mm -hmm. that's um, Casey and Lee Owen. Lee okay. Owens. So they were there. Uh, Lana Austin was there. Lana's great. Yeah, Nikki Storm, otherwise known as Nikki Cross now. These are, they're there. this is British and, wrestling and on the Viper show. And Viper was there. Piper Niven. Yeah, exactly. How cool is that? That's amazing, yeah. Like, so yeah, British boot camp. Well done. And well done to Rockstar Spud on winning the X Division Championship this day. Oh, yeah. Uh, birthdays. Now we will get to a birthday. Okay. And it's a big one for British wrestling. William Regal, I would like to wish you oh. a very happy 50th birthday today. It's a big one. That is a bit. 50th? 50th. Born well, in 1968. I genuinely thought he was older. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah, I don't know why. No, um. One of the best talkers in the biz. Yep. Uh, do you know what? I'll tell you, I used to hate him as a kid. Like, did you? I absolutely hated him, and I don't know why, but I just thought... Drank just, Chris Jericho's piss? Yeah, Story I know. Line. It's one of my actual favourite <laughs> things ever. I remember to go and see his Q&A, and that was all, all I wanted to ask was, what was his pee like? What was his pee like? And then He's, I was like, literally said to him, I was with, I was like, can you please ask this question? Because I can't, mm -hmm. can't do it. And then they didn't ask. I was raging. He's, um... Yeah, tremendously underrated, and I think you know he was he was destined apparently f uh, for a main event push following his King of the Ring win and yeah. suspension. Yeah. Uh, the, before he was suspended, he was apparently going to be really pushed. It's a shame we never got to see that. I'd like to see a few more matches before he does retire. But I think he is just killing it in NXT just oh, now. Yeah. Like, it, he, he just, him for that role. I'm mm. sorry, but it's made for him. Yep, totally. Um, I also think it was really nice that um, when the UK tourney happened, a wee nod, and they, well, they went to Blackpool, which is his old stomping ground. I went there. Went, went to the show. Did you? Yeah, Are you going to go to this one coming up? I hope so, yeah. Do, so did I. I'm going to go. I'm definitely going to go. Yep. Um, no, he's, he's great. And he collects big lizards. You know I didn't know that, actually. Yeah, but a man after my own heart. But yeah, I know him um, uh, back, start, uh, back, back in the day when he wrestled with All-Star um, over in the UK. Him and Brookside used to tag together. Brookside, obviously, now trainer at NXT. Mm -hmm. Father um, of Zaya, Brooks Island Yeah, well. exactly. He's doing really well in the Indies. Uh, for the Golden Boys, that was their tag team. Yes. Name. So, yeah. I never saw Regal wrestle as good, but I, I grew up watching Brookside. I used to come Yeah, and like time. World of Sport and stuff, like mm -hmm. towards the end of it. Yep. Uh, yeah. 
Happy birthday. Happy birthday, William Regal. I'm really chuffed it's your birthday today. So that was this day in wrestling and you can follow me on Twitter here. If you like what we do at Cultaholic, you can support us by pledging to our Patreon, patreon.com forward slash Cultaholic. And most importantly, don't forget to hit subscribe and join us.